Next up, we have Alexander Soroka. He is from Water Science and Policy. Alex, the time is now yours. Last year, Delaware farmers raised over 215 million chickens. That's a big number. That's a huge amount of meat. But what I really want you to think about is the amount of food that those birds need to survive. I mean, one chicken, right, that's about a handful of feet a day. You multiply that by 220 million, spread that out over a year. What do you have? You have a mountain of feed. It's huge. You'd be bigger than this building. They'd eat this up in no time. What's even more impressive is the amount of land that we have to have under crops in order to grow that. If you were to go to southern Delaware right now, stand up on top of a fire tower and look around you, you would see corn and soybean, far as your eye can look. And why this is interesting is that if you want to produce that much food in such a small area, you have to watch what you're putting in your system. So we put down fertilizer to sustain the corn, fertilizer to sustain our soybean. But not all of it makes it into the plant. Some of it can escape into water. Other speakers have said, you know, it can go into groundwater or it can get washed off into surface water. That's not good for fish. It'll cause algal blooms that'll make the bacteria go crazy and pull oxygen out of water. So what my research team looks at is we see how can we get the fertilizer to the plant. The more that goes in the plant, the less it can escape. And we do that by changing when we fertilize and how much we put down. If more goes into the plant, we get more consistent high yields but we also get clean water. Thank you. All right, thank you, Alex.